1 Peter 1, 5 through 9 it says, Of the saints who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. The trial of your faith. I don't know if you've ever been experiencing that. The trial of your faith. You know, right through history, God's own people are a people who have known the reality of persecution. Persecution is something we don't really have a skerrick of, really, let's face it, mm. in Australia. Down through the record of history, we see God's people, some of them burned, hanged, drowned, and sometimes, sadly, even by so-called Protestants, believe it or not, people such as ourselves who believe that baptism is for believers. In history, there was the high churches or the established church of the day, the kind of recognised church of the day that believed in infant baptism, objected to that, and so strongly that they even killed godly men and women who stood for the truth of believers' baptism, Anabaptists, really, uh, such as we. And God's people through history, they've suffered horrible things. It's an awful thing to think that people could take such measures. And what of us today? What of we today, here, today, now, in this time, in this nation? What of us? How would we measure up? How would we measure up if there was a trial to come? A time of trial. Now, these are staggering statistics. I just picked this up lately. It says, and there's different measures of these statistics. In fact, I chose the measures that were less than some other statistics that I read. But what it says in this quote that I picked up, 833 Christians will be martyred tomorrow. That's amazing, isn't it? You know, the trial of your faith, people tonight. 833 of our brothers and sisters are going to die for Christ tomorrow mm -hmm. in the 21st century. As incredible as it seems, it's true. 833 Christians, 833 believers in Christ killed for their faith. And it's been said that over 300,000 Christians are martyred every year. These are staggering statistics, aren't they? We should sit up and take notice of that. What about you and me? Will we face up to the trial of our faith? I trust that we will. That we will. Trials will come and they can purify our faith. Think through the word of God through men and women of the Bible as well as through history. For example, Job. Job. He was the most just man on all the earth. There's no one who could rate higher in terms of faith. His faith was tested. He lost everything. Everything that he had. Yet he still praised God. As we read in Job 23.10, Job says that even though he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. He knew what faith tried and tested would be. When Job lost his sons, he lost his daughters, he lost his wealth, he lost his servants, and then his own body was afflicted with dreadful sores all over. It would have been easy for him to blame God, to object, to abandon his faith. But, chapter 1, verse 20 of Job, Job fell to the ground and he worshipped. He worshipped God. He held steadfast in his faith, even though life 
for him was full of pain and agony, the trial of your faith. Are you willing to cross the line, even when things may not be as you would like it? We've heard of Job. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, to use their Babylonian names, they were challenged by the godless of the day to deny God, to deny God, to bow down to the idol. Everybody else was doing it. Hey, this was the end thing. You know, the king struck up his rock band and everybody had to do their thing, do his thing. But no, they would not bow down to the idol. They would not bow down and worship the idol. Even though it meant the fiery furnace for them, you and I face a similar decision. Will we bow down or will we stand up? The king then cast them into the fire. We read in Daniel 3, verse 25, he says that the king looked into that fiery place. In verse 25 he says, Lo, look, behold, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen. 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 It was the fire. It was the fire that put them in the presence of the Lord Jesus. It was the fire that put them in His presence. The trial of your faith is a blessed time. Fiery trials will come. God says it will. God says it will. Expect it. Your faith will be tried. We've heard of Job, of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. What about Abraham? Abraham's faith was tried, it was tested. It says of him, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. He stood against the odds. He went to the extremity in his surrender of faith as he traipsed up that hill, carrying the word that he'd hewed himself and his own son, willing to surrender all. His faith was tried, wasn't it? And it came forth as gold too. Is your faith being exercised? You know, it's been said, you make a muscle stronger by exercising it. Are you exercising your faith? Exercising your faith. In Hebrews 11, we read of the men and women of faith. We read there from verse 36, uh, as it names some, and then it goes to unnamed ones. In Hebrews 11, verse 36, it says of these others, they had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds, chains, and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not weary. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. The trial of their faith it was not just some kind of slogan. It was real. It was real. It was pain. It was suffering. It was torment. And we see that they obtained a good report by faith. An old time writer said this, God had one son without sin, but no son without a cross. No son without a cross. It goes with the territory. We will face trials. He says, take up your cross daily and follow me. Down through history we see the constant persecution of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Some have put it that since Calvary, over 43 million Christians have become martyrs. 43 million. It's no small number. And over 50% of these in the last century alone. More than 200 million Christians face persecution every day. Millions of our brothers and sisters in other lands. Will we be in their number. We need more than ever before a back to basics, no nonsense Christianity. A back to basics Christianity. Not the frothy garbage stuff, but the biblical stuff. That's what we need. We must have that. And that's where the rubber hits the road. That's where you'll see the faith that endures. 
It won't be about prosperity and all the hoo-ha. It'll be about the real stuff. Real faith. Gutsy faith. Faith that endures. Faith like Daniel's faith. Daniel's faith. Even in the lion's den, it was tested there and it came forth as gold. You know, the law was don't pray and he didn't. He, he obeyed God's law above man's law and he prayed and he was thrown in the lion's den. But we know God undertook. And sometimes our Lord will lead us through, maybe to the lion's den, maybe through the dark valleys. For all of us, we, we may have been there. I know there's some here tonight. You've been there. Maybe you're still there in the dark valley. Could be death's dark valley. One preacher put it, it's in the valleys of life that we learn that he is the lily of the valleys. Mm. He's there. He is with you. And by faith he can hold his hand there, even in the dark times, even in the valleys, even in those dread places, even in the fiery place. 1 Peter 4.12, we read that it says, Beloved, think it not strange. Don't think it's surprising, something unusual. It's not a strange thing, he says, concerning the fiery trial that is to try you, as though some strange thing was happening unto you, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. It's a time of joy, a time of suffering, but a time of joy. It goes on, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For some people, that's true for you. I know there's folk in workplaces where, and, and I've can, encountered it too, where Christians get mocked. And uh, we know it's a reality. I was listening to something of late. Um, you might suffer financially for it. You know, you might be denied promotions because uh, they know you're a Christian. And, and uh, you get that closer scrutiny, don't you? It happens all the time. We know that. We that are working in the workforce at this time. That uh, it, it's a reality. Uh, we, it goes on, verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And then it goes on, verse 19. Commit your keeping of your soul to him. Friends, our God is a consuming fire. Let's not muck around. Don't muck around. Don't play games. The fire is coming. I really believe the fire is coming. And he shall sit as a refiner, we read. He's the one who's going to sit and he's going to look at the fire. And he's going to look at you in the fire and he's going to refine you. He's going to purify you. In Exodus 20, verse 20, the, the Ten Commandments have just been given. And the people were fearful as there was thunderings and uh, lightning and so on happening. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not. For God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that you sin not. God is come to prove you. There's a time that God does prove us. It's not a pleasant time, but he is refining us. He's making us more like Christ. And yet we see, sadly, in that same context, that the people of God, uh, as it were, of that day, uh, didn't take them long to get out of line. You know, they just seen the Ten Commandments given, God's wonderful, um, evident presence, and then they go and go and muck around making a golden calf and just bow down to uh, idols made by men. What a sad thing. And friends, we need to have the fear, his fear, before our faces that we sin not. And then uh, to stand, having done all, to stand. In the evil day, stand, as we see in Ephesians 6. What of you tonight? What of we tonight? Will we let God prove us? Or will we sometimes shy away from his hand? When his hand might be heavy on us, when his hand might be putting us in situations that are difficult for us, he's still with you there. Amen. He's still with you there. Amen. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Mm -hmm. Take that promise, people, tonight. Take it. Even if it be a stake that you're tied to with wood kindled at your feet, 
Mm. Let it be that he is with you, even mm. there, even then. That's a reality for many who yep. have gone before us yep. and who still are martyred today. Friends, it's real. And Deuteronomy 8 verse 2, it says, uh, As the Lord speaks to the children of Israel, he says that the Lord thy God have led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart. It's interesting, isn't it? Three things there. God has led us to humble us. We all need that. We all need to be humbled. To prove us, to try, to test us, and thirdly, to know what was in our heart. And by His grace, ideally and prayerfully, it will be faith that stands that test of proving. It will be faith that will be found in our heart as we trust Him. An old time preacher said, Unshakable faith comes from having your faith shaken. Mm -hmm. It's when the faith is shaken that unshakable faith Hallelujah. will stand, it will shine through, it will stand the test, the storms of life. And trials are those tests of character that can happen as we see right through the Word. We see it's warts and all, isn't it, about the men and women of God. We see their faults and failings just as starkly as the good things they've done. And God's honest about the record of the men and women. They weren't perfect examples, and yet... There's a testing of character and we see them shine in those times. And as the Lord tests the state of our hearts, it's through that faith that endures, the faith that will endure through the fiery trial. And the testing of your faith, it's producing endurance, it's patience. It will be as gold, it will shine through. Friends, I want to exhort and encourage you today. This is something you can apply this is not some theoretical thing. We're not talking about some theory here tonight. We're talking about where the rubber hits the road. It's where you're going to be Monday morning. It's when the trial of your faith happens. It could be tonight. The trial of your faith. When situations happen, when you're tested in family, in, in, with friends, in the day by day of life. The fiery trial. The faith that endures is the real thing. It's... Uh, I know in, in healthcare they use a term, gold standard. It's the best you can get. Gold standard faith. It's faith that is as gold. Mm. Faith that will shine through. And that's the kind of faith we want, isn't it? Faith that will shine. Yes. Faith that will glow. A faith that will be vibrant and alive and living and flourishing and shining through. Even in the midst of a fiery trial. And so it's when we stand firm in those times of trial that we can know God's grace and help. It says in Matthew 10, verse 22, it says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Interesting verse, isn't it? You're going to be hated by all men for my name's sake. Is that true for us? Is that true for the church by and large today? Or are we kind of all pretty cosy and comfortable with the world? Maybe we're too popular. Maybe, maybe we've toned it down, we've jazzed it up so much that there's scarcely any message left to it. But the Bible says, the Lord Jesus says to his people, Ye shall, you, God's people, you're going to be hated by all men for my name's sake. Now, we get, we get some hate mail, believe it or not. I can't, I can't believe, I can't understand why, to be honest. But uh, we, get some, we get some hate calls. Uh, it's, uh, it's been an almost weekly occurrence from time to time. People that hate our guts. And, and it, it makes me feel glad, in a way. Hallelujah. Because we must be doing something right. I, I hope so, anyway. <laughs> I trust so, I pray so, that we're doing something right. Because we should be hated of all men mm. for his name's sake. Amen. And so there should, be a, there should be a degree of people hating the message of the gospel. Because it's convicting, it's confronting, it's uh, uncomfortable, isn't it? Mm. As we think of when we hear preaching about repentance, we hear preaching about sin, we hear preaching about getting right with God, uh, uh, stopping playing games, uh, stopping playing church and starting to really commit to Christ. And these are days we need to get serious people tonight. In 2 Timothy 2.12 it says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. 
It's an interesting verse, isn't it? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. You know, I think of these men and women at the stake being burnt as their, as their flesh bubbles and, and boils and catches a flame as they gruesomely, grotesquely die. If you, reign, if you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. I wonder if those kind of verses might have been in their thoughts when they went through such uh, awful trauma and torture. I wonder if those kind of scriptures might have jumped out at them in their subconscious, in their, in their meditation, in their heart, that such scriptures might have come to their attention. And the real power of faith is seen when the flames come. It's when the flames come. And we know in Australia we're not likely to face anything uh, remotely like such a thing. And I know I've seen some horrific things. I know uh, I've seen some horrific things of what does go on. You know, it, it's very easy to access it now on the internet, for example, uh, of actual decapitations mm -hmm. and, and, and awful uh, things of, of, of people being tortured, burnt to death. You can, you can watch it on YouTube mm -hmm. or, or whatever. You, know, you can see such ghastly things. It's in your face today. We can see it. It's real. It's 21st century. It's our brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the gruesome fact, people, tonight. And what do you have? What do we have to suffer? Let's face it. Honestly, God help us to be more faithful. To entrust what we are and have to Him. And as Isaiah 40, verse 29, it says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, He increaseth strength. Let's be those who will be realising we're faint. We're, we've got no might that he might give power to the faint and that he might increase strength. Friends, just think of many accounts we could give of persecution. I'll just touch on some, uh, just real brief. There was a preacher, he was 16 at the time, heading off as a Christian on a, on a ship in the high seas with a crew of 12. This man is about 16. And before he left the shore, he promised his mother that he would meet with her, so to speak, three times a day at the throne of grace. He agreed to pray three times a day at the time his mother would have been praying. And he thought that he must uh, pray aloud as he went down below deck and prayed. And the crew threw wood at him. They poured buckets of water on him. They could not put out the fire that was in his soul. They tied him to the mast. They laid 39 stripes on his back. Still he prayed. They tied a rope around his body and threw him overboard and he swam as best he could when he took hold of the side of the ship. They pulled him off with a pole, uh, pushed him off rather with a pole. And at last his strength gave way. And supposing they meant to kill him, he prayed that God would forgive them and he called out, Send my mother, send my body to my mother and tell her that I died for Jesus. <laughs> he was then pulled on deck, unconscious, and after some time came to. Conviction began to seize the sailors. Before night, two of them were gloriously converted. Oh, and inside of a week, everyone on board, including the captain, was blessedly saved. Oh, yes, God. The trial of your faith is going to come forth as gold. I know even in uh, our city, there's, there's Christians standing up for Christ. Some of them are really radical people and uh, they're getting persecuted even uh, in our city of Adelaide today because they're standing up for the gospel and I thank God that they are willing to open their mouths with the gospel. We know that the time is limited when such opportunities may present and we know that persecution will rise up because the world doesn't want to hear the message. The world doesn't want to hear the message that you must repent or you will likewise perish. They want some cosy, comfortable kind of easy breezy, you know, three steps to financial security and heaven thrown in too. You know, that's the kind of gospel that we're getting fed today. We've got to get back to the truth. Here's another story. Some years ago in Japan, uh, sorry, when Japan was taking over Korea, they were bitterly persecuting Christians at that time, carrying them off to Japanese jails. Believers who were not arrested felt that by this very fact that they noticed this. And there's one church where one of the uh, people in the church said, there must be something wrong with our church because there's 37 people from that other church in jail, but there's only one of us in the jail. So they were getting worried. They weren't, they, obviously something was wrong, right? Something was wrong because they weren't in jail. He said, I fear the Lord does not count us worthy to suffer persecution. Amen. Interesting, isn't it? Um, 
There's many stories we could tell. There's another one here of, uh, in Vietnam. There was a, a communist police officer he earned an infamous name for himself by bashing up Christians and arresting them. And as far as he was concerned, these lawbreakers deserved to be punished as they conducted their illegal religious activities. And this man, his name was Tung. God had other plans for Tung. Despite his animosity towards the local Christians, several believers began to persistently pray for him. Yeah, yeah. They prayed for this police official. Some even dared to share the gospel with him. And gradually, as they continued to win his trust and friendship, Tung's heart began to soften. Finally, he came to the point he could no longer reject the truth of the gospel. And Tung became a Christian. Like the Apostle Paul, the policeman had become one of the very people he'd previously persecuted. And Tung's outlook on life was transformed. Many of the believers uh, could not believe that this was the same man who had been filled with so much hatred towards them. And it went on, he became a leader himself. God used him too. And, you know, I've heard stories even of late. I know, uh, I've heard it said that some of these ones who are persecuting the Christians in the city of Adelaide, as a couple of them got saved. Mm -hmm. They've actually turned from being the ones cursing and, and uh, harassing the Christians to actually joining, to that. actually trusting Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, one bowing and, and weeping as she did so, mm -hmm. as she trusted Christ. That's real. Mm -hmm. That's real, isn't it? The trial of your faith is going to come forth as gold. Uh, an old-time preacher, Vance Havner, said this, A persecuted church has a repelling power as well as an attracting power. The great awakenings of the past have not been begun by the gathering in of the many, but by the deeper consecration of the few. Yeah. And another quote, Whenever you see persecution, there is more than a probability. The truth is on the persecuted side. Mm. And to close, Dwight Moody said this, Happiness is caused by things that happen around me, and circumstances will mar it, but joy flows right on through trouble. Joy flows on through the dark. Joy flows on in the night as well as in the day. Joy flows all through persecution and opposition. It's an unceasing fountain bubbling up in the heart, a secret spring the world can't see and doesn't know anything about. The Lord gives his people perpetual joy when they walk in obedience to him. The trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's our prayer tonight. I trust that's our prayer. Let us commit to that. Lord, we thank you that we can stand in this nation as people largely uh, unaffected by... Uh, suffering, and yet, Lord, you cause to that place uh, from time to time. Help us, Lord, when we face those dark valleys. Help us see where we walk that you are with us still. And even if it be, Lord, that for some of us, even inconceivable though it may seem at this time, that some of us may be tortured for Christ, that we might be tortured for the gospel for your sake. Lord, help us to hold fast. Help us, Lord, to have that kind of faith, that gold standard kind of faith, that quality kind of faith, that real kind of faith that comes from you, that comes from your hand, and that is enabled by your Spirit in, in lives and hearts. Lord, we pray, help us to be those faithful ones so that we might be in the number of those who have gone before us. We thank you, Lord, for the testimony of men and women of faith that have gone through, some through death itself, to your presence. Lord, we thank you for their testimony today. Help us, Lord, to consider and take stock tonight of where we are at individually, Lord, that each of us can consider how it is that our faith can shine even through those times of trial. Lord, for people tonight that might be going through times of trial in terms of their health, in terms of it could be family harassment or persecution. It could be people misunderstanding at work and even hateful people. Lord, we pray that you would give everyone that resolute heart, that steadfast faith, that they can stand strong 
and see you do a work, even in the midst of that trial. Uh, Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.